Hi guys, Belle here and it's time for day five of hashtag creep on June 24 created by the wonderful Tracy Fox. I will leave the links to that down below. I'm not part of the official collaboration. I'm just having fun making some ephemera kind of joining along um, and I'm using mostly using the digitals that have been created by Tracy Fox for this challenge. Again, the link to those is in her video, so go check it out if you like them. So today's one's gonna be a tag. I am just making ephemera. I don't wanna make anything too complicated. I just want this to be a little bit of fun. So I'm just gonna make a tag. And I wanted to use this image because it went so well with today's tag. And actually, I know this is meant to be a creepy doll and true. I'd have to really wash her because she looks a bit gross. Um, <laughs> I don't really like that. <laughs> so no thank you. But actually, I think she's quite cute. Look at those eyes. So I want to use her. And I've got this frame that I want to use. So I am going to trim this image down. I am filming this a few days in advance so I haven't actually seen even day threes from the person in the collaboration yet so I'm excited to go view that. Um, I'm just doing a few in advance because you know time and everything. So I'm going to put that there. I also want to fold this in half. Um, I'm going to do kind of a simple decorated tag with a sort of hidden journaling space. You'll see what I mean as we go on. I'm absolutely loving the digital papers for this um, kit. I mean, they're just so beautiful. Uh, I would like them as actual wallpaper. That's how much I'm enjoying them. Uh, I might even put it that way around. No, oh, look. Well, that didn't match up very well, did it? My cutting, not the fault of the kit. Okay. So first thing I want to do is I am going to ink around her, even though we probably won't need her to be inked around. And actually thinking about that, do I want to ink this and make it grungy? The tag. Might want to make the tag a bit grungier. Just thinking. I can spray some alcohol inks on here and dry it and it would make it a bit grungier. So let's do that. And then that can be drying whilst we do. Sorry, I'm just getting my alcohol ink. Not alcohol ink, my spray. Sorry, I've got some vintage photo. I think I do have a grey one as well. Maybe we want to bring in a little bit of, no, there's going to be blue already on it. I thought I had the grey stain. Obviously not. So I'm also going to need my water bottle. <laughs> cloth okay so let's do this then I don't want it everywhere so yeah I'm using the vintage photo do you know what let's turn it this way it's liable to sit a bit better I just want to have it a bit do you know what will help as well if I actually wet the um, tag and then if you haven't got sprays you can easily do this with um the inks and if you haven't got these inks well you're not going to get the oxide effect which you can already see there but you can do it with paint you know you can just add a bit of grunge with some 
paint effects. I feel like I want a little bit more just up here. like so so you can see it's looking grungier it's got this beautiful oxide effect and I'm going to leave that to dry a minute while we do a little bit of something else right I'm gonna have ink all over my fingers okay so I want to emboss this so I've got my VersaFine ink pad and I'm going to be using, um, am I going to be using this? No, no I'm not. I wanted the clear embossing powder. Hold on. Okay, so I've got my clear embossing powder. Obviously you can use the dauber, pens, whatever kind of embossing you don't have to emboss. If you've got the glaze, um, that'll work. Um, you know, like glossy accents or something, or even possibly oh, what they're called, like perfect pearls and stuff, if you want a glossier effect. Just going to put this on here, making sure it's the clear. I brought a white embossing powder from the exact same brand, and it looks exactly like the clear embossing powder. And I cannot tell you how many times <laughs> I have accidentally um, use the white instead of the clear on a project it's not so bad if you use the clear instead of the white but it is the other way around so I'm just going to use my heat gun on this okay so it's got a slight gloss to it now which is what I wanted so move that over and if you've seen yesterday's video you'll know that I um, printed out got embossing powder everywhere printed out some of the Craftly Hall story which is what the Tracy Fox challenge is kind of revolving around and I printed it out on some overhead laminator sheets and I want to use it again I loved using it in yesterday's project and I printed enough out so that there were um, four pieces of the story on one sheet. So the way I'm thinking it, I might as well use it because I've got it. And I want to put this behind the picture frame. But if you saw, it must have been last year's now, uh, last year's Tim Holtz. Halloween ephemera packs he had these kind of acetate sheets that's not working acetate sheets that um, had markings on some actually had bits cut out or oh, I love those sheets so much um, that's there why is that one not going on uh, so we're going to kind of make a version of that ish with this laminator sheet I don't even know where that pen mark is now well that was a load of good wasn't it yeah that'll do doesn't matter because if necessary I'll just trim it so what I'm going to do is, first of all, make sure my writing is the right way around. I want the doll's face to be behind here. Like so. And then I want this to be behind the doll. But I basically want to kind of cut it. This can't be ripped because of the type of... Um, because of what it is. Let's see how I feel about that. Oh yes, I like that. So I want it kind of cut. Now I can make that more jagged um, if I kind of go in and just do a few sharp cuts in places rather than 
have it really round. Obviously, if you're going to do this, please make sure. Can you even see that? Please make sure that you're being careful. Now, I want to glue everything. Let's make sure the back has no embossing powder on because that will make gluing everything a tad more difficult. I'm only really going to have to glue this on three sides. And again, be careful when you're using glue with any kind of vellum or transparency because they will smear if it gets too near the edge, which is one reason I like to glue slightly away from the edge and two, why I like to then use a paintbrush or something to flatten the glue so it's less likely to actually smear. So that now looks like that, which I love. I did not ink the edge of this up, so let's ink this too. Can't have it with a white edge. That would just not do. Right, okay. Still seems to be a little bit of white there. Okay, and now I'm going to glue the doll face in. <laughs> that sounds like a gangster from the 1920s, doesn't it? Hey, doll face, what you doing? From Guys and Dolls or something. Oh my gosh, that was the worst American accent. I apologise to all of you. <laughs> Worst Amer American accent ever. <laughs> but there you go. You get my meaning and what I'm saying, I hope. So she's going to stick behind there. Now this glue should hold this acetate, this laminate in place. But just in case it doesn't, I'm going to put some brads through to just hold it in place and actually thinking about it I should have put the brads all the way through because I want to make this into a pocket and it's going to have to be a very small pocket it doesn't matter because the brads are going to go through anyway don't worry I'm thinking I'm thinking okay I have these little Tim Holtz ones. These are the mini fasteners and they have like um, a screw type top to them. So I'm just going to grab four. They're very small. I would have liked bigger brads, but this is what I had nearby. So this is what we are using. Okay, so I'm going to put that through. If you can hear that, that's one of my little kittens, my cats. They're not kittens anymore, guys. If you've been with me for a while, you remember when I got them. They're going to be two this year. Two, guys. Oh, gosh. I can't believe that. Where has the time gone to? Why can't I get this through? There we go. Let's do this. So I'm going to put four of those. Can you see that? It's got the little screw top. I'm going to put four of those through. Okay, so there we go, guys. Now, obviously, if you don't have brads, you could stitch this. Or if you don't have glue that works for acetate, then you can use brads or stitching too. I didn't want that because it would... Uh, I love stitching, but I feel like it would really... Um, affect the kind of overall look I was going for with the photo frame. I'm just going to turn all of these because I really do want this to become a pocket. So I want these kind of turned in a way that it's not going to interfere with something going in and out. Okay, let's get started on here now, guys. So I have also one of the digital papers. I know, quite a bright touch of blue. There we go. Um, and I wanted to just kind of tear this want to use it on part of the background 
of the tag. I wanted to bring in a pop of colour, that's too much. I wanted to bring in a pop of colour, I like that. I'm going to use black on the edge of this and then get this glued down. I might even do one slightly on the back too. I could have that there and then I could have one going down the back here because once it's closed you're only going to see one side. So let's do that. Let's do one down the back too. I want this straight, so let's just get this cut straight. I know, why didn't I just cut it straight to begin with? I don't know guys. <laughs> it is what it is. Okay, so I want that like that. And then let's get these glued down need to make sure really need to make sure that I'm doing this side and then turning it over do 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 like so let's cut that before I put the other one on and then I'm trying to cut both but not able to see both okay let's do this on this side and I'm gonna have to open this one up because I want it all the way to the top and to the edge There we go. Okay. Let's cut this. Like so. So that's going to look like that front and back. Like that. And then this doll's face kind of going to go on like that but before we attach the doll's face I want to do something else I want to actually do some stitching um, on here so I'm going to actually use a pen just to mark out I don't want them to be big stitches so I want to be able to see and once I've stitched on here I'm going to do crosses need to see where the doll's going to be. Doll face. Every time I say that, I'm just thinking of guys and dolls. <laughs> so. My daughter and I used to watch that movie all the time. And then I also think I want some over here. And this I can do all the way down. I've gone very quiet now while I do these. So this will be hand stitched. So I was thinking, let's do some holes. So I'm just going to poke holes through these through where I've put the hole, the, the pen marks. So I will do that and I will come back. Okay, so I've put holes all the way through that. You can see it better on this side. And I'm gonna do a cross stitch on there, like just a crossed stitch. I was thinking of brown, but now I'm looking at it, I think I want black. So I need to go and grab my black thread. 
so I'm just using um, if you do stitch it's the 310 DMC embroidery floss get my needle but any embroidery floss will work completely and I also want just a little bit of washi doesn't even matter what kind because I'm going to come in here up through there and what I want to do because I don't want to put a knot in here because again this is going to be part of the hidden journaling spot is I want to use some washi it really doesn't matter what kind but hopefully not a kind that actually rips okay not that one then let's just choose this one and I'm going to glue this really well once I can get the other washi off my hand which it hasn't and I'm just gonna stick that piece normally I would tie a knot or I would do a loop um, start with a loop but because of this um, because of the way I'm going to use this journaling card or uh, this tag I can't do that I mean I could start with a loop I'm trying to find where I put the hole and I'm going to do crosses I need to go this side try and do all your stitching in the same direction like your, your first stitch in the same direction you don't have to that's just because I do cross stitch and it's kind of ingrained in me to make sure your stitches are all going the same way so it's going to look like that so I'm going to do that all the way up and all the way over here and then I'll be back okay guys so I've done all that just got to really press all that washi down does it look attractive on the inside no but it doesn't matter so you can see I've got all the stitching just adds more texture to love okay so for the hidden journaling spot i have one of my dyed large tea cards uh index cards i want to make sure because this will need to be a lot smaller than the inside because it needs room to go in and out and i am also going to be stitching now with the other stitching that I just did you can obviously do that with a machine but I'm going to be adding machine stitching anyway so I didn't want to also add um, machine stitching to that I wanted the texture so that's going to go in here lovely and grungy as it is and obviously we're going to need to cut the tag bit off so let's do that let's kind of center it a little bit and as usual when i'm putting things in and out especially of a space like this i'm going to round the bottom corners just because it makes it easier and I don't want any of those sharp corners catching on anything as we're putting that inside. So that should hide in there when that's closed. We also need one for behind the doll. I mean, it's almost perfect as it is. I might just trim it a little bit smaller. Be 
because you know the more journaling space we can have guys the better it is in our journals if you journal in your journals maybe you don't um i do i love to journal hence why i make journals <laughs> And again, I'm going to round the corners and that should, let's make sure I've done the right way. Yes, that should fit in there and not hopefully get caught on any of those. Now, what I'm going to do before I fit this on, I'm actually going to stitch this. And the way I'm going to do it is I want to stitch, I want to do a double stitch. So I'm going to have to start at this corner, stitch, go around then kind of double stitch up there again and then over to here and then double stitch up there just to that bit because then I'm going to stitch it together. You'll see what I mean once I've done it. So before I finished up the stitching it together, I wanted to show you what I meant. So you can see there's one load of stitching round these pieces here because these are then going to be stitched together but I've managed to do a double stitch up the tops by starting there and going around that's one stitch and then I could go around this bit a second time and again here one stitch and then go around there so started at the bit that I won't be stitched closed which means now when I stitch this I'll get two lines around the bottom half as well. Really, really hope that makes sense. So let me go stitch that. Okay, that's completely stitched now. I've tried to make sure that the second stitch that I did that actually closes the tag together is as close to the edge as possible. So the first one can be like a little bit wonky because that's not going to interfere with my tag going in and out because the tag was still open, this tag. But once I've stitched it together, that needs to be as clear to the edge or as near to the edge as possible. And I'm now going to ink this up before I forget to do that. Then we've got to see if the tag will fit. <laughs> Let's hope it does. And I'm also, because it's so white in there, I'm just going to ink a little bit. So, yeah. Do, do, do. And this side. I think I'm going to leave the black back plain because I just love all that grunginess. Now, let's see if this fits in. I mean got to be careful trying to find there it is my bone folder because that's a really good way of just getting in and making those corners making sure they've got a little bit of space in them before then putting this in here I mean, it's almost perfect I just need to trim I could actually trim it off the top bit rather than the bottom as that's already rounded. Let's see. Have to make sure that it can disappear completely inside. Yep, that's inside, brilliant. So there's our little hidden tuck spot. I'm not gonna decorate on here, which is why I picked, where did my, ink ago oh there it is it's why I picked an index card that's already got lots of this kind of grunge on it you could use inks again paints you could stamp on it because stamping won't make it any thicker but you really don't want to if it's going in and out of the tag you really don't want to make that thicker um, because it would cause problems going in and out okay Let's ink this up while we're at it. And then I think I was going to put this on with um, double sided sticky tape. Which again, may interfere with how wide the tag could be. But let's try this. Because I really want to cover those, um, the back of those brads up. Get it as close to the edge as I possibly can. Press that down. Ooh, 
want to make sure those are covered. Like so. And I'm going to do that all the way around. Okay, so that's on. I didn't want to do it all the way around. Obviously, I'm going to make this a pocket. So this has to, this side, I didn't put any tape on. And I'm just going to measure. Yep, that should still fit in there. And again, if it doesn't, we can trim it. It's no big deal. Okay, I'm going to put her on at an angle. Really press that down, that tape, because obviously we've got the brads. Like so. Okay, let's just trim that a little bit more just to make sure there isn't a problem. And again, I could put a stamped image on this if I wanted to, but I don't want anything too bulky on there because I want it to be able to disappear inside. So yeah, so that's going to go on there. So what I, what I now need to do is I need to put a little bit of fabric and lace on these pieces. Again, I don't want it too thick. But what I'm gonna do is I'm kinda gonna have an overlap of the fabric. So I'm gonna stitch it right at the top. But what I'm hoping is I can get it to look so that the fabric's sticking out of the top here. That's what I'm hoping for because that will give it the um, illusion of having a fabric tab whilst actually having a hidden journaling spot. I was wondering if I wide a little bit. I don't know if I want would want white sticking out of here or whether I'd want a bit more black. Let's just do a bit of both. Let's trim it just a tad more. Um, and I can have a little bit of black on there as well. And the tiniest bit of white. This doesn't matter so much about it. Um, Kind of sticking out. Let's even trim that. And I'm just going to stitch these on. You could staple, you could glue. I'm going to stitch because that's the effect I like. Okay, so what I'm hoping is that that will then work. Let's put this one in first because I think this, this isn't so much of an issue. I say whilst then struggling to get that in there. Oh, so cute. And then we're going to put this in here again. I'm going to get my bone folder until the kind of tag gets used to having this other tag. No, that's not going to work. Okay, well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to come over the top. It can still look like... Come on. It's got a top what I, I really wanted it to kind of stick over the top a little bit but it still looks like it's got a fabric top when actually it's a hidden journaling space and then final bit I know it seems to have taken forever I wanted this saying that it has come to dwell among us because I just it has come to dwell among us because that kind of made me laugh considering the um, creepy doll. So I wanted that on here. Hmm. Just makes me laugh. <laughs> oh dear me. Yes, I laugh a lot at my own jokes or things that just make me giggle. What is life without some laughter? And if we can't laugh at ourselves or at random things, what is the point? 
and I'm going to use my pen that I had kept by me and now has disappeared. Here we go. Go. Oh, don't want the needle. And that's going to go around it. In a bit of a messy kind of way. Because, you know, the scribbly kind of pen effect gives it, again, a kind of grungy feel. It also reminds me of kids, you know, when kids do drawings when they're really little and it's a bit scribbly. Gives me that kind of feel. Which, because this is a doll, works for me. Okay, that's it, guys. Oh my gosh, took longer than I thought. But that's the day five project. Love it. We've got our hidden journaling spots, two of them. We've used the acetate again to give us this kind of double effect on there. Creepy doll, some stitching. And um, yeah, that's today's project. I hope you enjoyed that. And I will be back soon with another one. Until next time, she says, bye-bye. I hope you're having lots and lots of crafty fun. Bye.